What's up you guys, Void here coming back at you all with some more limited videos. Just in review of the different colors from Rivals of Ixalan. We're just going to be looking at all of the cards in black this time. And I'm going to give my opinion whether or not I feel like they're going to be good for pre-release. And this also applies for Draft Weekend and just limited in general. First card we're going to look at here is Tetsumok Primal Death. One of the most impressive looking cards in the entire set. 6 mana for a 6-6 six, six Black Elder Dinosaur Legendary Creature with Death Touch. But that's not even the best part. The best part is he has an activated ability from the hand. You can pay one black to reveal him and then put a prey counter on a target creature. You can only do it on your turn, but it's still pretty good. When it enters the battlefield, you destroy each creature your opponent controls with a prey counter on it. So if you can only imagine how this is going to play out in Limited, where there's not that many counter spells, not that many ways of reacting to something like this other than holding back some of your creatures, so at the very least you're going to force your opponents to be hesitant. But removal is always good, and especially if you can get it on a creature ETB, that means you don't necessarily need to be as dependent on your instants and sorceries for removal which is always good and limited. Forerunner of the Coalition. The Forerunners are amazing. We didn't have a blue one, but we have a decent one for pirates. You get a pirate, put it on the top of your deck, and then when another pirate enters the battlefield under your control, each opponent's going to lose one life. Usually, when you're going to be playing a card like this, you're going to at least have some devotion to the pirate tribe, at least have some of them in your deck. You don't need to have full-on pirate tribal in order to run a card like this. You just need to have at least one good pirate, I would say, and then you're good to go. You don't want it to be dead in your hand is what I'm trying to say. Then we have the Mythic Vampire Cleric, 2-4 for 4 flyer with Ascend, and at the beginning of your upkeep, if you have the City's Blessing, you get to reveal the top card of your library, put it into your hand. Each opponent loses X life and you gain X life where X is that card's converted mana cost. So it's sort of like the Dark Confidant of this set, but even better because it hurts your opponent instead of you. Does depend on having the City's Blessing, which is actually a thing you could do pretty easily in Limited. It just depends. Sometimes getting the City's Blessing, some cards don't work well with it in Limited. I think this is actually very playable. And always with Evasion, you have to focus on flying creatures. 2-4 isn't amazing on a flyer, but it's something. And especially if you want to go with a Vampire Tribal, themed deck. You can't really go wrong with this card. Then we have Champion of Dusk, a 5 mana 4-4 four, four Vampire Knight with no keywords, which is a little alarming. You usually want something, maybe lifelink at least, vigilance, who knows. When Champion of Dusk enters the battlefield, you draw X cards and you lose X life, where X is the number of vampires you control. So again, very heavy towards the vampire tribe, a little bit more so than a lot of the other cards in the set. So even if it is just itself, you have to look at it and say, well, what if Champion of Dusk is the only vampire, then you just draw one card and you lose one life. Is it worth it on a 5 mana for 4-4? Four, four? Maybe. So I wouldn't completely ignore it, but it's something. Dead Man's Chest, 2 mana for an aura. Enchant a creature and opponent controls. When that creature dies, you exile cards equal to its power from the top of its owner's library, and you get to cast non-land cards from among them. You get to spend mana of any color to do that. I think it's decent enough if you have the good removal to go with it. Likely, you have to depend on how that 1-2 punch in a limited deck. It's probably not going to be that reliable, so I would probably stay away from it. Dire Fleet Poisoner, 2 mana for 2-2 two, two flash death. Death Touch, which is already pretty good. When Dire Fleet Poisoner enters the battlefield, target attacking pirate you control gets plus one plus one against Death Touch until end of turn. So some shenanigans there. You could obviously flash it into play. Don't worry about the trigger and just block a creature, kill it. Or you could just attack, swing with all your creatures, and whatever creature gets blocked by a better creature, you can just give it a death touch and kill it. Pretty versatile. I like her. Don't even have to go with the pirate theme to play her just because of Flash and Death Touch already being pretty good on an already 2-2 two, two for 2. Overall, pretty decent. They have Mastermind's Acquisition, probably one of the most iffy cards in the set, so you don't necessarily know what you're going to be able to do. You're probably going to have to bring a sideboard, and I would ask a judge, whoever's there, what is acceptable with this card because so many people have different opinions about it. You don't necessarily want to search for a card in your library, even though it's not the worst thing in the world. You would rather just get a good bomb from outside in your sideboard, which is much better, and why wouldn't you? So it really depends on what your LGS is going to say, but I think it's pretty cool. Tomb Robber, 3 mana for a 1-1 one, one menace, you get to pay 1 mana, discard a card, and then he explores. I don't necessarily like discarding cards unlimited, but for what you get on a menace body, it is 3 mana, so relatively cheap, and it explores, which is going to then get you some cards if it's a land, it's going to give you the option of your top deck, I think that's a fantastic mechanic. Even if it is just discarding a card, you get something out of it, so I would definitely consider building around this card as a good three drop. Bonus Hunger, three mana instant. Each opponent sacrifices a creature. 
If you have the city's blessing instead, each opponent sacrifices half of the creatures he or she controls rounded up. Which isn't really bad, but it doesn't target, doesn't specifically get rid of one creature that you want to get rid of. It gives them the option. If they have to sacrifice a creature, chances are they're going to sacrifice their worst creature. Even if you have the city's blessing, half of their creature still gives them that option to keep their best creatures alive. So, not completely unplayable, but not something I would look to play black just because of this card. It's pretty weak. At least compared to some other more direct removal. Then we have Sadistic Sky Marcher, a good vampire. 2 to 4 3 mana for a flying lifelink little soldier. As an additional cost to cast Sadistic Sky Marcher, you reveal a vampire card from your hand or you pay 1 mana. So like I said with the Merfolk where you have to reveal a Merfolk from your hand or you pay more mana, this is going to be incredibly easy. There's just vampires all over limited, commons on commons that are going to be easy to build a deck around. So it shouldn't cost you 4 mana to get a 2 2 flyer with a lifelink but rather 3 mana, which is super efficient. You get the lifelink, gain some life, there's some synergies that are going to be easy to do based around gaining life. And we have Reaver Ambush, 3 mana for an instant exile target creature with power 3 or less. I believe there was one from Ixalan that destroyed a creature with power 3 or less, so this is probably going to be better. It's uncommon, so that's probably why it exiles. It's not unplayable. I would rather settle on removal like this and just settle on a very cheap and weak creature because at least this can deal with the creature straight up. So it's not unplayable at all. Mausoleum Harpy, 5 mana for a 3 3 flyer with Ascend. Whenever another creature you control dies, if you have the city's blessing, you get to put a plus one plus one counter on Mausoleum Harpy, which is always good. Getting more power and toughness in the air is never a bad thing. Awesome evasion. When you look at sealed, you look at evasion anyway. So. A 3-3 flyer for 5 mana isn't, oh my gosh, this is the best flyer ever, but you have to think long term, and late game, with Ascend, when other creatures are dying, you get more plus one plus one counters on it, it gets bigger, harder to deal with, pretty good. Oathsworn Vampire, 2-2 two, two for 2, sort of the bloodgast of the set, but not really, doesn't have haste, comes into play tapped, but you get to cast it from your graveyard if you gain life this turn, which isn't too bad, so 2-2 two, two for 2, a little bit slow, but other than that, more bodies isn't necessarily a bad thing, and if you can constantly get some board presence back, it's something. And then we have Arterial Flow for 3 mana sorcery, each opponent discards 2 cards, if you control a vampire, each opponent loses 2 life, and you gain 2 life. I love these sort of mind rot effects they're very underrated him to torok whatever you want to call them forcing an opponent to discard two cards is already pretty devastating but if you have a vampire you're also gonna have a four point life swing i mean that's just insane just for three mana this is more than just a good filler card this is something that i probably would put in if i'm gonna play vampires anyway you have golden demise another three mana sorcery with ascend all creatures get minus two minus two until end of turn if you have the city's blessing all of your opponent's creatures instead get minus two minus two your creatures are saved so it's one of those sweeper effects definitely playable there's a lot of cheap flyers that have weak toughness easy to get rid of those good evasion creatures it's always important unblockable creatures that you can't really deal with so getting rid of those along with other creatures with toughness two or less is usually a good thing sweeper effects board wipes anything that you can deal with a bunch of creatures at the same time is efficient removal and then we have pitiless plunderer a four mana one four human pirate whenever another creature you control dies you create a treasure artifact token so you get more mana don't necessarily know how i feel about it not necessarily something i would rush to put into a deck and it's kind of iffy as far as fillers go could be good if you need that extra bit of mana or if you need some sort of incentive to get rid of your own creatures or if you need some sort of deterrent for your opponent when it comes to removing your creatures it could see some playability but as far as that goes i'm not too certain about it at best it's a filler and then we have just this ridiculous card here this is insane ravenous chupacabra four mana for a 2-2 when it enters the battlefield destroy target creature and opponent controls what did they seriously just reprint necrotal but even better because it can destroy any target creature one of your opponent's controls that's insane it's obviously going to be first picked in draft it's ridiculous removal on a creature doesn't have first strike like necrotal but who really cares you get better removal it's all good on a four mana body it's not over costed or anything yeah definitely sign me up for that if i get this i'm gonna definitely want to look and see what else black has to offer in my pool before i even start playing other colors that's insane you get awesome removal which is one of the most important things you need in limited it's also pretty good value for just four mana and then we have impale a four mana sorcery destroy target creature say what you want to say might be a little bit 
too expensive, might not allow you to do too much else on that turn, but what it does is what it's supposed to do, what you want it to do, destroy a target creature. If there's a creature you don't like, it gets rid of it, that's exactly what you want. Settle for cards like these, and you're going to be able to deal with the biggest problems anyway. Then we have Grasping Scoundrel, 1 mana for a 1-1, one, one, that gets plus 1 plus 0 as long as it's attacking. So you get a 2-1 there on attack, which isn't really that bad if you're going to play black. 2 power out of your 1 drops, that's always a good thing. Then we have Dark Inquiry, a 3 mana sorcery, target opponent reveals his or her hand, and you choose a non-land card from it, they have to discard it, so it's basically Thought Seize for 3 mana. Decent filler, but not, not something I would look to play, it's kind of bad. Canal Monitor, a 5-3 for 5 Vanilla Lizard. Again, vanilla creatures are usually fillers at the worst case scenario. Not really something I would rush to play. Vampire Revenant, a 3-1 flyer for 4 mana. and It's a vampire, so you have that synergy, but otherwise, the 1 toughness makes it pretty vulnerable for 4 mana. You want something a little bit tougher than that, but not bad when you can get evasion in the form of 3 power in the air. Pretty decent. You have Recover, return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand, and then you get to draw a card, so it's some sort of recovery, recursion effect, get creatures back, your best creature that keeps getting removed. It's a thing. It's not fantastic, but it's still a thing. Probably a good filler. Voracious Vampire, 3 mana for a 2-2 two, two with Menace. I love Menace, very underrated and limited. Whenever it enters the battlefield, target vampire you control gets plus one, plus one, and gains menace until end of turn. Oh boy, if you do go the vampire route, you have a decent one here, and you're likely going to go black-white anyway. So giving a vampire plus one, plus one, and menace means it's probably not going to get blocked. And it itself also has menace. It's a 2-2. Two, two. Always decent. Fathom Fleet Border, 3 mana for a 3-3. Three, three. When it enters the battlefield, you lose 2 life unless you control another pirate. Which shouldn't be too hard, there are a lot of decent pirates that you can get out there pretty early. A lot of good ones in red, some good ones in black, and there's also a lot in blue. That shouldn't be a difficult thing. It's basically a 3-3 vanilla creature for 3 mana. I don't necessarily know how you want to view that other than a filler. Gruesome Fate, 3 mana, each opponent loses 1 life for each creature you control. I love these type of cards that just finish games and people don't realize it. It isn't desirable right off the bat until you realize, oh wow, I'm playing a token deck or I'm playing a lot of cheap creatures I can get out there pretty early. If you're going the aggro route, having something like this late game is perfect. If you're not going to be able to answer a lot of their big creatures, late game is not going to be for you. You might as well just play a card like this. Pretty good. Dinosaur Hunter, a 2-2 two, two for 2. Whenever it deals damage to a dinosaur, destroy that creature. I think that's pretty viable. A lot of good dinosaurs in this format, and even if it's just a 2-2 two, two for 2 with every other creature, you have basic power and toughness to expect out of the mana cost. So that's pretty decent. Dusk Charger for 4 mana, you have a 3-3 three, three with Ascend. Gets plus 2, plus 2 as long as you have the City's Blessing. So late game, it's a 5-5 five, five for 4 mana. That's pretty good value. It's all about getting good power and toughness too. Dusk Legion Zealot, 2 mana for a 1-1. One, one. When it enters the battlefield, you draw a card and you lose 1 life. This is pretty much Frexian Rager, which is a 3 mana that also draws you a card. It's a 2-2, two, two, I think, and you also lose 1 life. So pretty much the same effect, but even better because it's on a vampire and it has synergy for tribal if not it's still good in black pretty good card draw decent when you can get it along with your creatures moment of craving now you're not always going to have the best removal in black so settling on something like this it's also kind of versatile two mana instant giving a target creature minus two minus two until end of turn is always nice in combat you can throw a weaker creature out there end up killing a stronger creature and you also gain two life in the process so as far as doom blades go it's not anything like that but it's going to offer that bit of removal if you need it so anyway guys that's going to be it for the black cards from rivals of ixalan my assessment as far as limited goes in preparation for pre-release weekend if you like this video i advise you to check out my other videos i did for pre-release i will be covering all five colors of magic anyway you guys have a wonderful day void here signing off